Welcome to another episode of Doctor Who Time and Space. And we're just back to the normal with technical difficulties right from the outset. <laughs> Stop! <laughs> You're making me dizzy! No! Um, I'm Dee Cool, or Doctor Cool. And I'm Lewis Moon. And we are your hosts for Doctor Who Time and Space, a weekly podcast yes. about Doctor Who related things. I mean, we're your hosts today because... We're your hosts every day, unless at number 200 we decide to leave and move on to some fake people like we used to do. <laughs> so what are we on? I don't know, so um, episode 197? Yes. It? 197 or 198? I can't remember. It's um, 198. 198. Yes, 198, because I thought it was 198 last week, didn't I? Yes. I got okay, welcome to episode 198. Now hopefully we'll have no technical difficulties. Um... I'm Lewis Moon, as we said, and this is uh, our fellow, uh, my fellow podcaster. He also looks um, a bit like um, Charlie and Professor Kerensky, Deco. <laughs> Apparently. Apparently yes. so. What do we have on this week's show, then, Mr. Moon? Um, well, this week on the show, we are doing something new. And we are doing our Dream Doctor Who series. We'll explain more about what all that that means later on in the show. We'll also be giving a roundup of our views on the Patrick Troughton finale and classic episode, The War Games. We will be discussing the latest news. And we'll be pressing the magic randomizer. For the last time until a couple of weeks. <laughs> and all will be revealed there too. Yes. First up then, um, we should have a little brief chat about what we've been doing that's who related or geek related. Okay, What have well, you been up to, Lou? D-, D Cool, as always, has not been up to much. I've got nothing to report at all this week. I've, I've, oh. I've not... I, I, well, we covered me first, shall we, because I'm... Yes. I've literally not watched anything on television at all. I haven't actually turned my telly on for seven days, I don't think. I've not watched a single thing. Well, we'll change that so, tonight but tonight well no actually that's that's not entirely true i have watched the war games with you haven't I? yeah that's like we're going to talk about that later on anyway but aside from that the war games is the only thing i've watched this week so what have you been doing um well um obviously the war games mm-hmm. um doctor who wise um well i mean doctor who wise really it's the only thing i have been doing doctor who stuff uh started off the week i watched I listened to another part of my audio of the month. Basically, um, I sort of have, as well as the randomizer, I sort of choose every month a story which has been reduced in price recently or has a reduced price from the Big Finish range from the past. I, I don't really regularly pick up ones that they've done in recent years. This was one that they released um, about one and a half years ago. Okay. So it's not that old. Um, it's called Marshfall. It's very good. It's a Peter Davidson one. Um, Tegan Nissa and Turlow are also in it. Oh, Turlow. Um, I always like Turlow. So. Yeah, but there was one point in the audio where I forgot about uh, Tegan and Turlow. Uh, no, Nissa and T- uh, Turlow's story okay. going on. Because there's the whole Marshman story with uh, the Doctor... Um, the Doctor, Tegan, and Decide Marion, played by Gemma Redgrave. Okay. Um, versus the Marshman, yeah. Um, so, um, what are the Marshman like in it? Because I'm, they're obviously... Yeah, they're a, quite a, good, yeah. They are returning here, uh, look, returning villains, aren't yes. they? Yes. Well, they only really make noises, and, you know, they make, like, noises, and then they smash glass and destroy okay. people. So, I... I I think I said to you, possibly even on the podcast last week, that the Marshmen story is one of the ones I'd like to call for the randomizer. Yes, full circle. I, I can remember them vaguely from when I was growing up, but um, I can't really remember too much about them. Um, um, so aside from that, that that's, a, that's a goodie. What have you been watching, Who Wise? Um, I've been watching The Gunfighters this week. Okay, so a bit of classic... Yep. William Hartnell. William Hartnell stuff. What's I've never like? watched The Gunfighters before, actually. It's been a story I've wanted to watch for a while, to yep. tell you truthfully. I haven't been getting my hopes up, let's say that. And 
It's not the greatest story. Let, let's say that. It's quite low in dawn polls. Mm-hmm. It's quite low rate. It's below seven on IMDb. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I wasn't expecting it to be great. It's very fun. It's very enjoyable. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I love the sort of atmosphere and the setting. Yeah. Um, so I probably would as well because I'm a big West, Western lover. Yes, it feels very, very Western, you mm-hmm. know. Um, apparently it was out in the same year as The Good, The Bad and The Ugly. So, okay. Um, very different because, I mean, in the, from what I've seen of clips of the gunfighters, the gunfighters is probably more like your classic Western, whereas The Good, yeah. The Bad and The Ugly is, it was very different. It was very gritty and grimy and um, rough. Basically, the gunfighters is just loads of people shooting guns. Um, yeah, it it feels very um, very good. It it the feeling of the story is great. I mean, it does that setting very well. Yeah. Although, I found it wasn't the greatest of stories. The doctor. Th- um, Stephen and Dodo all quite underused in it they're, they're not really in it that much or at least they're not really involved in the story as much as they possibly could be oh ok yeah. um, but it's ok um, it's not necessarily one of the stories I would mostly recommend to people Yeah. Um, but give it a go you might like it I'm sure Deco will like it here it feels feels like something you'd like. There is a really annoying bit about it, which is every single scene there's a song summing up basically everything that's happened in the scene. Really? It's a bit weird. It's sort of a bit... Basically, it's like that. OK. The Last Chance Saloon song. It's OK at the start, but it gets annoying by episode four. Yeah. That's a really odd idea. So, so literally, they do they do a bit of music to summarise after each section. Well, they have a song basically between the scenes. Yeah. They have like the same song, and it carries on throughout the episode. But it does get really annoying. Okay. Well, now that we've talked about what we've been doing last week, we are time. going on to the news, which probably isn't going to be as good as last week. But it's in the last chance saloon. <laughs> Join in the song The law is right behind you And it won't take long So come you coyotes And howl at the moon Till there's blood upon the sawdust In the last chance saloon So, that's what happens between every scene. We should really play that at the beginning of every scene we should do, today. Yeah. Okay, so, so... What sort of news do we have this week, Mr. Mean? Obviously, the news is a bit lighter than last week. Because last week, we did have a lot of news. We had um, the old PCAP exit, didn't we? Yes, we had the whole PCAP exit. We had the season 10 date oh, announced. Yeah. We had the Ice Warriors returning. We had the... Season 11 timeline rumours, season 10 writers, class ratings, you know, so what all are you sorts do, of things. So what are you going to do, um, what are you going to do this week then to keep it interesting? Um, well, this week in the news, we've got some uh, season 10 filming news. Ooh. We've got um, some class ratings, got Doc 2 magazine details. A new Big Finish series. And we've got a Lethbridge Stewart novel. <laughs> we, should have a, we should have a sort of piece of cheering, celebratory music whenever a Lethbridge Stewart novel comes out. So, kick off with the news, sir. But basically, this week, I think we've got here um, Missy. So, I will subtitle this video for you. So. Missy is now painting a TARDIS. Yeah, just, uh, the 
understanding. She always does these strange announcement Pop videos. She's odd, isn't she? Um, the woman that plays Missy. Michelle Gomez. Yeah. You'd find on a tea and rooms on a she did the Apple oh. video last time. Oh yeah, that's right. Hard at it. I'll be coming out of this soon. Right. Have a coat. Yeah. Um, interesting announcement video for Missy. They they always do these interesting announcement videos. What I find is the strange thing this time for Missy's announcement is basically we've already had it. Why do you think that's strange? Because they've already confirmed it about ten times that Missy's returning in season oh, ten. Okay. Yeah. Yet they do an official announcement on BBC One and expect everyone to look surprised that Missy's back. So do we we know which story she's coming into, do we? Well. We do. She is coming into the sixth episode in the season, written by Stephen Moffat. Ooh. Do you think this is gonna be the end of Missy? Yes. I do. I'm not necessarily sure what would be the end of her in this series, but I think by the Christmas special. I think, yeah, she will leave in season 10. I think she'll probably be in the final. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't, be, it wouldn't surprise me if she was responsible for the Doctor's regeneration. Mm. She's the main villain or monster, the main threat from Capaldi's era, I would say. I'm going to be really sad when... Uh, no, I'm sort of skipping back into last week's news reading really now, but I'm going to be really sad when, when PCAP regenerates. I know, and I always get nervous at this point who the next Doctor's going to be, because I've always got a feeling that Doctor is going to be ruined <laughs> by what's coming next. You think so? Yes. There's always a chance, isn't there? I still don't believe they are going to push it to an extreme, so I, I think we'll be all right. I oh, think I'm we sure should be. be. Okay. I mean, do you think? Do you think we're always going to have a female master now, or do you think we'll go back to a male one after? I think they they could well go back. I think. Yeah. I think it was it was just a, it was just to prove things really. It was just to try and do things a bit different, mix it yes. up a little bit. So. Um, should we move on? Yes. Filming has continued on season ten, as you may guess, um, and we've spotted some. Creepy new monsters come into uh, our show, um, which look quite like the guys from the fires of Pompeii, Ooh. as everyone has been speculating on why. Well, that's quite interesting. Yeah, I mean, I, I haven't seen fires. Did I show you a picture? I, I I can picture it. Yeah. I can picture it already. And you're right; they do look a bit like them. These guys wearing sort of red shrouds. And look a little bit sort of like gargoyle. Um, gargoyle, yeah. What's your thinking then? Mm. I mean, having not seen Fires of Pompeii, is it about monsters? Are, are they monsters in it? I can't really remember it. Yeah. Um, it's Peter Capaldi's first appearance in Doctor Who. Yeah. So, I mean, we did get a bit of solution to why he chose the face of Cecilius. That's true. From Fires of Pompeii and the girl who died. Yeah. Yeah, they could go to spell these things out a little bit more, couldn't they? I believe it will be a new threat. I believe this will be in Jamie Matheson's. No, yeah. not Jamie Matheson's. We already know that's going to be episode five. What's his name? The guy... Toby Whitehouse. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. See, the Toby Whitehouse or Sarah Doll. No, they filmed Sarah Doll, I think. No, okay. Ro Ron Monroe, sorry. How much have they got left to film now, do we know? <laughs> well, they're recording... I think they've... No, it'll probably be Peter Harness. Um, could be anyone. They've <laughs> got the... They're doing block five at the moment. Right. Which is comprising of episode six and seven. They've also got episode... Episodes eight and nine to film. And the final ones. Oh, of course. I'll tell you what, it's, it's, it's... It seems like the filming's going on a long time. It does, yeah. Doesn't it? It feels what if they're longer episodes? No, that was rumoured last time. Yeah. Last season. I I don't think it would be longer no. episodes. But I don't know how many things do take quite a long time to film, don't they? Particularly yeah. when you've got some main characters. I mean, it seems like they always. It seems like they seem to. A lot of the things like Game of Thrones and and Walking Dead, they seem to film quite quickly in the great scheme of things. But I think the, 
the, thing, the difference there is that you've got so many main characters. Yeah. You can be filming things at the same they time. They have various writers for that as well yeah. for each episode, don't they? Yes. Um, now, there's a creepy video here of them. Yeah. Let's see them moving around on a set report filming. So, so we've got here um, one of those weird red creatures shrouded. Two things. of them. Oh, yeah, there's two of them, yeah. Walking around in the main part of London by the looks of it. There are strange people trying to fight with them. Yeah, maybe. Is that London? It's London now. Be unusual because they usually do their filming in Cardiff, don't they? Yes. They look quite, they look quite creepy actually, don't they? They do, yeah. They have a sort of. Um, the sort of scaliness of their heads makes them look a bit silent now. It does, silent yeah. 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 Interesting. I mean, what, uh, last week we going back to last week's news. We heard that there was going to be some sort of new kind of ice warrior. Oh, what do you yeah. think that means? Um, do you think it'll be something different? I mean, we had last time we saw them outside of their suits. Yeah, that's true. And we, and we did previously, didn't we? Go back to um, I'm not sure if it's in Chalvin's here or John Pertry's era, where we had the, the sort of leaders of the ice warriors. Uh, the Ice Lords. Mm. Yeah, so maybe we could see something like an Ice Lord return. Maybe. Oh, I'd love to see the Ice Lords. They look so cool. Yeah. I yeah. love the Seeds of Death Ice Lord. He looks so cool. And then they're in the Peladon one as well. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. No, that's that's a really interesting bit of news. I, I yeah. love the look of those creatures. I do. Cool. It'll be interesting to see sort of more details emerge throughout the next two months. Because it's only nine weeks till we get season uh, 10. I know, it's not long at all. So, it, just really? over two months away yeah, till we at get all. it. So, you should be getting trailers and stuff soon, and more news being eventually unveiled. Usually, we <laughs> don't get like titles and stuff until about a week before, but we have got a few titles already confirmed. Yeah. Definitely know the first episode's called A Star in Her Eye. That's yeah. now being confirmed by Dawn. Oh, is it? Okay. Um, there's episode. There's an episode called Extremists, which is the one with Missy in. Yeah. Um, Eaters of Light is Rona Monroe's episode. Yeah. And Haunted Hubs, another rumored title, which I think is okay. probably true for the David Suchet one. Excellent. Good. Oh, it's beginning to hot it up, isn't it? And, uh, it is. Yes. This is odd to me. They're still filming it. We're not that many weeks away. How many weeks are we away now from who? You, I saw you calculated earlier on. Nine Twitter. weeks. Nine weeks. So, yeah, it's surprising me they've still got as much to film as they have. They have, yeah. Well, um, class. Okay. Back to class again. This is getting boring now, isn't it? It seems like ages ago that we started our class news, doesn't it? I know. And we're still going on about We've it. We've had it like every week. Still um, going on about it. Although class has finished transmission on mm. BBC One, uh, we still have some consolidated ratings for episodes five and six of class. Um, this includes details of who w- recorded the program and watched it within a week. That sounds as if it, that sounds as if the answer is going to be and James Jameson from Norwich. Recorded it in a week and watched yeah. it. And they're probably not too far wrong, is it? Because the no. viewing figures were relatively low. Episode 5, Bravish Heart, which was broadcast at 10.46pm, had a confirmed audience of 0.69 million viewers. A uh, 6.4 uh, 6. share of the total TV audience. God, this is scary. It's over one million below the average time slot. Mm. Yeah. They they do advertise it very badly. I mean, <laughs> they were saying the other day on the podcast. I I can't remember where it was. They t- said about it, but they said that um, it's a bit of a rubbish advertising because they just had like a after Strictly they had like a corridor or something or Great British Bake Off. They just had a corridor being shown. Yeah. Like an empty corridor with like a little crack in it. Does that really want to make you want to watch it? Well, just full stop. I mean, I don't want to go on about it too much because I've gone about on about it pretty much every week since they announced when it was going to be being shown on BBC. But 
the BBC have just made such a big hash of this. They have. They really, really have. They've not. Oh wait, it said it in Dorm. That that what I was just saying. Uh, right. It, it, they've just made no effort whatsoever, which just seems really, really stupid. They've, I know. They put it on the wrong channel. They put it on the wrong time. And they've not even bothered to advertise it. I know. And what's the benefit of that? Surely they would want it to be a success. I, I yes. just really cannot fathom well, why they have treated it with such disdain. The programme got beaten by Newsnight, which got uh, 0.74 million. But it outrated through the keyhole on ITV, with which had um, 0.56 million. But an additional 0.21 million have accessed the episode on iPlayer since its release on BBC Three last October. The episode scored an AI of 78, which was the same AI, I believe, as Sleep No More. Okay. Um, which now it's getting into the Doctor Who levels of AI, which isn't as worrying. So yeah. we're getting into that point in AI of the slightly more weaker New Who episodes that have been scored that, because... The first two were like seven, early 70s, so okay. the lower the AI, the more you have to worry. But the, the actual, the last few episodes of Farth, I, mean, I think we, we enjoyed the whole series, but the last mm. few episodes were really, really strong. They were, they were really but good. Still can't see it returning, personally, I'm sad to say, I can't, I can't see it coming back. I know. Um, episode 6, Detained, followed immediately afterwards. Um, and had a consolidated audience of 0.29 million watching. Uh, the channel average is 0.82 million. Around uh, one night, uh, one nine five uh, thousand have accessed the episode on iPlayer, and the episode scored an AI of 79. Okay. Um, yes, I was. I agree with your point. We're probably not going to say. I think next week. I'm going to say maybe it's goodbye for class. I think next week we'll get um, the final class ratings yep. and then the week after, or then the only news we'd hear is probably it's the end of class. Yeah. I wonder, when, I wonder if the BBC will come out and tell us at some point what they plan to do with class. Mm. Because... I think we deserve to know. I, th I think we deserve to know whether it's been successful enough for another series. Yes. I still go back to a point I made a number of weeks ago now, that I believe that if something like Netflix had run with class, it would be far more successful than what it has been with the BBC. It would have been. I think the BBC ruined it. But yeah. uh, I, I don't yeah. like that. Well, I've got a lot of time for the BBC. But, yeah, um, I like the BBC. They produce some good stuff, yeah. but but no, I don't. I don't, I don't like the way they've handled it. I don't like the whole concept of, of BBC Three, and then I think you know it's not. It didn't do as well on BBC Three as they hoped it was. But again, mm. they didn't really bother advertising it too much. No, and therefore they've just they've just left it on the shelf to rot. Really, I think this is the end. Class dismissed. <laughs> um. So dawn. Storm. Uh, Doctor Who magazine issue 509 is out now and it features an interview with uh, self-confessed Doctor Who fan Rufus Hound. He played Sam Swift the Quick in 2015's The Woman Who Lived and more recently played the latest incarnation of the meddling monk for Big Finish. Um, and he talks in the magazine about why well, enjoy being part of uh, something you personally love so much? I'd like to see Rufus Hound as the Edling Monk. Yeah, no, it would be good to, to bring him back, wouldn't it? Yes, it would be really cool. Um, also in the issue, Doctor Who showrunner Stephen Moffat answers readers' burning questions. The weird world of the supernatural in the Doctor Who universe. The Eighth Doctor Rivers and the Meddling Monk and the Weeping Angels all feature in the brand new audio box set Doom Coalition 4. Dawn pays tribute to Rodney Bennett, the director who oversaw three very different productions during the early years of Tom Baker's tenure as the Doctor. The original Master is back in part two of the new comic strip Doorway to Hell. Um, fact of Fiction uh, goes back to uh, the Third Doctor and... Uh, Grant's fight against the mutants. Um, 
Space uh, 1969 awaits the Dr. Amy Roaring River song as the time team reach uh, the impossible astronaut. Uh, Dawn reviews the latest book, audio and DVD releases in the world of Doctor Who. The latest Doctor Who uh, news. Um, uh, previews of all of the coming releases. Uh, competitions, the Dawn crossword. Uh, the annual Dawn survey, Ooh. which is interesting. Yep. Um, a preview to season 10. And um, a look at ratings for class and return of Doctor Mysterio as a whole. Um, the issue's out now, um, priced uh, £5.99. Uh, you can get it in stores, but I'd recommend subscribing. The poll's good, I've, I've carried it out. But for someone who doesn't really listen to the big finishes from the past year, there's a big chunk of it I haven't filled out, but it's mainly about class and the magazine as a whole. Okay. Yeah, I mean it's it's been a difficult year for who magazines, podcasts, etc., etc. Because obviously there's been a fair. I know we've we've effect. had a hard time thinking of features yeah. over the last sixty weeks. Although you wouldn't have guessed it when listening to the show because no, because we still to talk for ages. Yeah, <laughs> you don't think we. It's sort of surprising how at the moment we're not running out of features as much as we could be. Yeah, so. Does that wrap up the news, or have we got any, uh, any we more? we do have more. We have more. Oh, yeah, we have a Lethbridge Stewart novel. Before we get to that. Oh. Um, Why do I have to wait? Unveiled yesterday, a three forthcoming four story sets Doctor the Ninth Doctor Chronicles, the Tenth Doctor Chronicles, and the Eleventh Doctor Chronicles. These don't have the doctors actually in them. Okay. Um, featuring all new stories with narration from Big Finish executive producer and Doctor Who's actor Nicholas Briggs. Um, it's sort of like the Destiny of the Doctor range from the 50th anniversary. Um, but the Ninth Doctor Chronicles is set to be released in May, and casting and story details can be found at the Big Finish website. So far, um, Nick Briggs uh, uh, will be joined by Camille Kaduri as Jackie and Bruno Langley as Adam. Um, there will be much more information across all three volumes in coming months, including release dates for the 10th Doctor and 11th Doctor versions, which will uh, both be out in 2018. Um, who do you think should be in the 10th and 11th Doctor versions? Do you uh, think not Paula. Well, she's already done a big finish. Yeah, that's true. She'd be happy to do them again. Um, I think. Maybe, maybe it'd be nice to see um, Martha return in one. Yeah, um, be good to see Karen Gillan as well. Yeah, in, that in would. Doing yeah. One. Yeah. Um, oh, but I bet River Song will be in the eleventh Doctor one. Yeah, no, indeed. Okay, um, so I wonder if David Tennant may be in the tenth Doctor one. Yeah, maybe. Could be. Um. So you can get each volume um, brought separately for £20 on download or £23 for a CD version, which unlocks download files in your Big Finish account. Pre-order bundles are available, collecting Doctor Who the Ninth Doctor, the Tenth Doctor and the Eleventh Doctor Chronicles together for £55 on download or £66 on CD going up to £80 and £100, respectively, when all three are released. To see other Big Finish Doctor Who news series releases, check out the entire range in the show notes over at misslewismeanadventures.weebly.com. This could be in the new newsletter that will maybe be coming out, if we get to that. Um, or the Big Finish website, which is just bigfinish.com. Fantastic. Brilliant. And now the news we've all been waiting for. Yes, Bridge Stewart! <laughs> that was quite good news. Um, Candy Jar Books have announced a new collection of three limited edition hardback novelers uh, to join the Lethbridge Stewart range for 2017. First of the novelers, The Life of Evans, is written by John Peel and is released um, by um, in March. As the title of as suggests, the novel sees the return of a character featured in both television and the Lethbridge-Stewart books. Um, 
The book also includes a bonus short story by Robert Ma uh, Ram uh, Mamoun called Time and Again. The story serves as a sequel to the 1985 Doctor Who television serial Time Lash and is a prequel to the uh, forthcoming spin-off series Travers and Wells. Ooh. Okay, um, revealing more of the mystery that was uh, first seen at the end of the novel Time Squared. Travers and Wells will uh, be a new novelist series echoing the novelists of H.D. Wells such as The War of the Worlds. That'll be... Is that Professor Travers? I think so. Hooray! Um, the Life of Evans is followed in May by Day of the Intelligence by Andy Franklin Allen. Uh, the release celebrates 50 years of the great intelligence, telling the official origin story, fully authorised by uh, Hysam and Lincoln. Um, finally, The Flaming Soldier by uh, Christopher Bryant is released in July, commemorating the uh, World War II hero, Aline Young, uh, Yulk Husband. Um, each novella will be strictly uh, limited to 400 copies and can be pre-ordered separately or and uh, a bundle at a big discounted price. Full details can be found via the Candy Jar website. Quite a lot of little bits of news this yeah, week. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, any thoughts on any of those? Um, not really, not other than the, the bits I've shared as we go along. Okay. I don't think. I think it's uh, fair enough. I think it's... Um, I think the, probably the key thing for me is that, is, that, is that we're gradually beginning to see a little bit more shape to the new series. As class is probably about to end its days. I'm, I'm bored I, of class news now. Me too. It's, I'm it's, bored. I I think I loved class. I really enjoyed it. Me but, too. But it's finished. It's been you know it was ages since we've watched it. I'm bored of those eight episodes. If they want any news, can you give us eight new episodes to talk <laughs> about? Because we'll be happy to talk about new things, but we're bored of eight boring episodes. <laughs> <laughs> So, on that basis, shall we move on to our main item? Um, yes. Um, we are going on to our dream Doctor Who series. With rings on their fingers and bells on their toes, the girls come to Tombstone in their high silk hose. They'll dance on the tables or sing you a tune For whatever's in your wallet at the last chance saloon Yes, Linda Barron. So... Stop singing. Um... The, so, main, the main feature. Yes. Before we get on to um, our review of the War Games, we're going to do our main feature, which is something very interesting. We're doing our Dream Doctor Who series. Okay, so what does that mean? Um, well, basically, what that means um, is we go through each series. Of New Who? Uh, each episode of New Who, like, say, for example, episode one. We pick out our favourite season opener from the first nine seasons of Doctor Who. And um, we pick a, a backup one as well. And we go through that uh, for all 13 episodes of A Perfect Season uh, before we do Nightmare next week. And we, do, we choose a special and a Christmas special. So we have a backup one as well. Um, we shall evaluate this once again after season 10 mm -hmm. um, because we will do a feature um, or two where we can sum up some of the features we've done uh, late 2016, 17 that could be updated. Okay. Such as, you know, stuff about Capaldi, six episode challenge, best possible series, you know, we have to wrap up some of those things to fit in with season 10. So, if we start it off then, uh, are we both going to give our views on our, our favourite first episode from New Who? Yes. Um, maybe interesting here. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to say I've got quite a few season nines in here. Okay. You? That's interesting. I probably have myself, actually. Okay, so that's the point, because episode one is The Magician's Apprentice. Okay. Which is... A hard one for me, okay. 
I'm going to say it's a very hard one for me to pick because um, I'm stuck between three episodes. I personally, I like The Magician's Apprentice, but there's bits in it that I don't like. Yes. Bits I find annoying, like the big tank scene. So I've gone, as my season one opener, I've gone for Deep Breath. Okay, that's my backup choice. Is it? Deep breath. Deep breath. Yeah, no, I've gone for deep breath because I think it was a really great introduction to Capaldi. I liked seeing the whatever they're called gang. So no gang, gang. Um I like the setting. And oh, there's some yeah. very, very funny moments. My backup probably would have been Asylum of the Daleks. Okay. Well Magician's Apprentice, even though there are a few bits which are a bit cringy. Um I do like it, it's a good opener. Um sees the return of Davros, the Daleks, Missy, you know. Great opener to the series, I mm. think. Good right. cliffhanger. Yes. So, are we gonna, we're going to agree to disagree on this one. I, I yes. Yep. Yeah, okay. So, um, episode two. What a surprise! The witch is familiar. I'd agree with you on this one. Yes. I, I definitely would agree. I actually think the witch is familiar is a lot stronger than the witch. It is. Yeah. Um, I really love the dialogue between. The Doctor and Davros. Yes. And and there's some very very funny moments in it. There like, are, like, like a bit the, from the Doctor in Davros's uh, contraption, Dalek yes. suit, <laughs> whatever. The Davros suit. Yeah. Um, my backup is Day of the Moon, the second Silence episode. Okay, my backup is probably actually probably into the Dalek. Okay. The, I, yeah. The second Silence one, I think, is, is really good as well. Yes. But um, I, I think I prefer the two. I think I prefer the first one. As well. I do, but it doesn't reach yeah. my episode one. That's the thing. Which, which for me, is really, really strong. Yes. Uh, episode three? Yep. For me, it's Under the Lake. Mine too. Third season, uh, season nine in a row. And my backup is The Unquiet Dead. I... Have I seen that one? Is that the Shakespeare? Yeah. No, that's the. It's the one I always get confused. With. It's Charles Dickens, yeah. one, isn't it? Now, let me explain this. I was struggling with episode three because I found there were quite a lot of mere episodes in there. You know, Victory of the Daleks, Robot of Sherwood, um, A Town Called Mercy. Which is my um, backup, incidentally. Is it? Yeah. Um, I love Town Called Mercy. It's yeah. probably because I like to be Western. Gridlock. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of episodes which. I don't think deserve to get to back up. Yet, same with Unquiet Dead, but it's the one I prefer the most out of all of the episodes that are from yeah. the back that that could be in there. It was definitely Under the Lake was way out. In front yes, of definitely, me. definitely. The third Under one. the Lake's brilliant. Um, that changes though with episode four, Girl in the Fireplace. Alright, let's see. I had to go for Listen. Okay, and that's my backup. And choice. my backup was. Again in the fireplace. Yeah, in the fireplace. So you've got yeah. them the other way around. Yeah. Listen is fantastic. Capaldi's phenomenal. Um, Jenna Coleman's uh, really good. There's been good performances. Very creepy, you know. Yeah. Very good. Um, and I love that scene in the bed. Uh, but um, the girl in the fireplace has to do it for me. Uh, Stephen Mo- one of Stephen Moffat's first outings on the show, and he does it very well. Definitely a great monster in Girl yes. in the Fireplace with the. Uh, That's probably the most robots. memorable thing about it. Has got the bit of cringy dialogue with the Doctor at one point, which is yes. very. Uh, fits in with the sorts of things that I find a bit annoying about Tenant yes. Stops at times. He's got, got a very good it. open. a uh, very good um, ending, though. Mm-hmm. It has, yeah. No, it's, it's definitely a good one. Number five Angels Take Manhattan. Agreed. And um, backup is Flesh and Stone. See, my backup is probably the Rebel Flesh. Oh yeah. I really like. I know it's not particularly no, popular. No, the is it, ma- uh, Yeah, no, it is. When, when, when you look at it in terms of the um, the ratings on on mm. things, people don't seem to like that Gang of Two Parter. But I really liked it. I've only seen it once. To be fair, it may not be as good as I remember. Yeah, I can't really remember it, so I I, I, I that much. So yeah. I I can't really judge it. Um, Angels Take Manhattan though I love it, it's very creepy we watched it the other week one of the better Angel ones, brilliant yep. um, and another Angel one with Flesh and Stone two brilliant Angel yeah, episodes true. I mean, Flesh and Stone isn't as strong as Angels Take Manhattan and it's probably the weakest Weeping Angel episode we've had yep. at least uh, so far yep. uh, I don't agree. know whether we're having any more or any other stupid cameo appearances ok, um 
Number six. Sorry, you'll have to disagree with me here, Dalek. Yep. I, 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 I'm, I, I do disagree with you as well. I'm, I'm sorry to say this to D. Cool, because D. Cool, I do think this story is overrated, but looking through episode sixes, I didn't think they were all that strong. No, I would agree I would agree. I think you. Dalek was probably my strongest episode out of those. Personally, I've gone for the caretaker. Okay, I've got the woman who lived as the backup though. I've got that's my backup too. Mm. I like the woman who lives. I, I love yeah. the dialogue. Yeah, I mean, it's, Powdy and Maisie Williams are both really good. They are. They are really strong. I mean, it's, it's, it's a very slow FSA, but yes. I love the setting. I like the hurry. I setting. do too. Um, monster's a bit pointless, really. Mm. But Rufus Howard's very entertaining. Yes, he is. So um, I, I think I, I think I prefer the caretaker. Okay. But only just, and I've changed my mind on that. If you look on my list here, oh, you can see that I've I've put an arrow the the swapping them around so okay. throughout the course of the show I changed my mind on it. Okay, so episode seven I put the Zygon invasion. So did I. Um and my backup is a good man goes to war. My backup is Kill the Moon. Okay. I like Kill the Moon personally uh -huh. but I prefer a good man goes to war. Uh it unites all of the people from yeah. uh the series and um it's got a shocking ending. I think um, definitely, um, to me, the, the Zygon two-parter, I like the Zygon invasion better than the Now, I prefer the, the second invasion. one, Yeah. Um, uh, but I do love the first episode too. I think it's a fantastic story. And the first part, we don't have Jenna Coleman and Peter Capaldi at their best, I think. in the, I'll, I'll explain in a second. Well, episode 8. Let's come on to 8 then. Zygon inversion. Um... To me, it's Mummy on the Orient Express, which is one of my favourite New Who stories, full stop. God, I forgot to put that in there. Um, I'm going to say Zygon Inversion. Jenna Coleman's brilliant as Bonnie. Mm -hmm. um, the Zygons are in it. But the most outstanding thing is Peter Capaldi's famous anti-war speech. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I do really like it, but it, it doesn't make my top two, because... Um, I, and actually, I guess what your you can top guess what my one? second one is. Human nature. It is human nature. I've got to put Mummy and the Orient Express as my backup. Yeah. Changing it, but that doesn't mean this two-parter isn't great. I do much prefer the second part of Human Nature, Family of Blood. Yeah, I like both parts of, of Human Nature, Family of Blood. Yes, it's uh, my it's, first ever story, but it's a strong, a strong episode. It's eight a is strong one of the episode. Ones. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Episode nine's quite strong, isn't it? It is very strong, yeah. Apart from Sleep No More. Yeah. Um, what have you got I put first? Family of Blood. So did I. Because I have to go for Family of Blood. I love Family I, of Blood. I love the... I forgot what they're called now, but the ballet's in it. What's the family called? Uh, the Family of Blood. Well, they're called the Family of Blood, aren't yeah. they? Yeah, right, okay. Yes, they're the ones. What's the series uh, called? Doctor so, Who. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Um, what, about, what did you go for backup for? Um, um, the Empty Child. Yeah, do you know, I nearly went for The Empty Child, but in the end, and whether I'm right on this, I'm, I might not flat be. Flatline? I went for Flatline, yeah. Because okay. really, Flatline was just really, really original. I don't know how you can prefer it than The Empty Child. No, nah, you might be right. Um, might be right. But definitely, I definitely prefer Family of Blood, so... Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. That's, that's but definitely but The Empty Child's very atmospheric. I, yeah. I, you know, I chose two RTD era ones here, interestingly. As I chose two Stephen Moffat ones in the last one. Well, I did choose Human Nature to back up, but I forgot about Mummy on the yeah. Express. Yeah. Um, well, I didn't. I just forgot to put it in there. Um, Number 10, the hardest category of all. It is the hardest category. There are three absolutely brilliant Three episodes fantastic in episodes. Um, the first one, four. I think it's four, it might be four. Four, yeah. Um, you definitely, you can't beat, you can't beat the, the, the main one there. Blink. Blink has got to win that, sure. Yes. I think Blink is brilliant. It's one of the best episodes in New Who. Yeah. Um, and Doctor Who overall. Uh, it's very clever, um, very interesting, very good introduction to Weeping Angels. Yeah. Fantastic story. Um, 
What did you Back give? Up, money? Though, there's three stories here. I think the second part of the empty child one mm -hmm. and the Vincent and the Doctor get close, but we've got to go for midnight. I've gone for midnight as well. Yeah. Um, the, the reason Midnight Wind to Ava Vincent and the Doctor is the conversation we had last, last week, I think, week, yes. when we were talking about the fact that Vincent and the Doctor is very reliant on that last the Yeah, last the rest scene. of it isn't that great, but the, the last scene is absolutely yeah. phenomenal, you the, know. The, the rest of it's just it's good Doctor Who. But yes. But it's the last scene that, that makes it different, isn't it? Episode 11, quite it's a no standout one. It's a no-brainer, heaven sent. Heaven sent. Um, but the second, my run up is, uh, is very close on here. Uh, I've got Dark Water. So have I. Yeah, it's, it's, it is very good, Dark Water. Yeah. Um, probably better than the second one, but does that mean it doesn't make it to my episode 12? We'll see in a second. Yeah, I, I, think, I think Dark Water is much better than, it is. than uh, whatever the second one was called. Death in Heaven. Yeah. Now, you may be... Uh, not pleased with me for episode 12, Death in Heaven. Because um, I've chosen this because I think it's the strongest out of the ones that are there. My episode 12, I've gone for the Pandora Opens. That's my backup. Okay. It's been a long time since I've seen Pandora Opens, yes. but I seem to remember it being quite good. Um, uh, I mean, my backup's probably Hellbent. Hellbent, do you prefer that than Death in Heaven? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, mainly because uh, the Death in Heaven was better watching it the second time round. It weakens it still the feels, Simon Man. It still feels like, um, yeah, it, it still feels like it's nowhere near as good as, as Dark Water. No, it it's, a no a it's a bit of a letdown to Dark Water. Yeah. Um, episode 13. There's a bit of less to choose from here, isn't there? Because yes. uh, we've not had an episode 13 in recent I think years. for me it's pretty obvious. It and it's the name of the Doctor. Yeah, I, I think that's a no-brainer as well. Yeah, but um, I there's lots the of episodes one. which people love. Mm. But I put the Big Bang, the second part of the Pandora one. I put Party of the Waves. Okay. I'm not 100% sure why. Um, <laughs> I thought you didn't like that episode. Um, <laughs> well, unless I'm, unless I'm getting mulled it up. It's the one with the game show. Part. Was that the game show one? Yeah. Oh, I think Dalek it was. game show. Oh, no, I don't like that one very much. It's Ninth Doctor Generation. Yeah. I was thinking that was the first part of that story with the game shows and everything. No, it's the second part. Oh, I'm going to change that one. Now. I don't want that one. What was the other one you said? Uh, the Big Bang. Yeah, I'm going to go for that. Okay. I'll change my mind. Um, <laughs> I knew you would. I thought you didn't like that. Yeah, I, I know I your mind better than you do. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I was thinking... The second part of it was a lot better, and it was the first one that the city game show bit. Yeah, you know, no, you're right. I, I don't like the, that one because I think it's really time bound. Yes. What should we do first, special or Christmas? Let's do specials first. Okay. Do we just count the special season? I think I think it probably is really yeah. Okay. Waters of Mars. Waters of Mars. But no I was thinking brainer. about Days of the Doctor and whether we would have to oh, count that's that true, as one. Because yeah. if that had to count, then obviously Day would have to get yeah. above Waters of Mars. Yes. That'd be a tough one, because Water, Water to Mars is a very, very good one. I did choose the end of time as my backup, but if we're going to have the... If it's not just the specials from that season, yeah. then... Um, so, finally, what did you make as being the best Christmas episode? You disagree on, with me, I think, but the one we watched on the randomizer last year, last Christmas. OK. I've gone for the snowman. OK, that's my backup choice. My back of choice, can you guess what it is? Return of Doctor Mysterio. It is, I really liked it. I really yeah. enjoyed it. I can see Mysterio. why I love Return of Doctor Mysterio. My Christmas top five, I think, is Last Christmas, The Snowmen, Husbands of River Song, Return of Doctor Mysterio, and Christmas Invasion. Yeah. Do you know, of these 15 episodes in fact i'm not going to include the i'm just going to of the 13 episodes yes i've only got three from the r2d period r2d2 R R let me see r2d period One, in mine two, in my in my first three, choice four, I've, only got three. I've got four and it's not even close I, when we when i was looking through all the episodes I was I was looking at particularly the first half of, of the series of, of RTD period, 
And I was thinking, none of yeah. these are particularly good. I mean, when you get to about episodes 8 to 10, yeah. they're all really brilliant. I was, to me, it's, it's all about taste. Yes. But I mean, when people go on about how Dog 2's gone, gone backwards under Stephen Moffat, I can't see it at all. I think the episodes are by far better. Mm. By far better. I mean, Moffat. we'll talk more later. I mean, next week about our Nightmare series. Yeah. Do you think we're going to get more RTDs than Stephen Moffat? Or well, no, actually. Funny enough. No, we're probably going to get more mothballs. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we, we might do because I, I think that probably is fair. I think it's probably, probably there's Moffat's more best bad episodes. Yeah, I think that that might be yeah. the case. But. There's more good Moffat episodes than RTD era. Yeah. But strange, there's more bad Moffat episodes than RTD era. Yeah. Yeah. It's strange how that works, but it is true. Do you know the other interesting thing of mine, of the top 13, eight of my 13 are Capaldi. Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven. Yeah. Which you Maybe get it's is, just is because of... I don't know why... It's, I think it's mainly because of... Not necessarily writing for some of them, for most of them it could be, but for some of them it's Capaldi's performance and how he does it for me. Uh, particularly Heaven Set and the Zygon Inversion and the performances yeah. that are shown, as well as the exceptional writing. Well, so, um, certainly I think if you take Heaven Sent, if you took Capaldi out of that... You couldn't do it. It wouldn't necessarily be a great adventure. No. It's, it's very Capaldi dependent. Yeah, um, if you have Matt no Smith... If you had uh, Matt Smith in the... Yeah, all you'd have is the male wandering around for 50 yeah. minutes. Um, interesting, that. Um, it'll be even more interesting... Well, we've already worked on our Nightmare series, but we can always patch that up a little bit. Yeah, and I think we're, we're going to run with that next week. Yeah, we are. Excellent. That was a good little article. Yes. Should we move on to our final piece of stuff today? Yes. Now, we are going to uh, go to the war zone and we are going to go to the Troughton serial known as the war games it's your last chance of losing where there's no one to mind it's your last chance of losing And the first place you'll find Okay, so, Linda Barron, you can, you can leave now. <laughs> it doesn't actually appear in the episode, the singer of that. No, it's really yeah. odd, odd sort of concept, isn't it? For no, but so, no, later on it goes like... That you don't think it explains it, but later on, later on in the episode, it sort of goes scene by scene. Ah. Basically, it goes like the two people have challenged each other to a duel <laughs> or something. I don't know. It gets really boring. So, thinking of people challenging other to each other to a duel. Yes. Um, we're not going to be talking about two people. We're going to be talking about whole armies of people. Yes, and now we are going on to one of the most acclaimed and most popular stories of um, Doctor Who history, the war games. Do we agree? We'll tell you a little bit in a minute. Uh, but first things first, could you tell us a little bit about the Patrick Troughton story? Okay, so this one is based on an alien planet, but certainly for the first episode at least, we don't appreciate that we get the impression that we are actually in 1917 yeah i think um, episodes one and two we don't see this yeah alien planet but as it turns out basically what the doctor finds is so they, they land in what they think is a war zone they get they get captured by um soldiers yeah taken back as, as, as sort of spies um things they're aware that, that things are a little bit askew Insofar as uh, I think, from memory, I think it's, it's, I think it was Zoe, wasn't it? Sort of discovers that there's this little console thing which 
looks far more futuristic than what should be anticipated for the for 1917. And over the course of of the story, what the, the Doctor discovers is that there's actually this plot to conquer the galaxy, and this is worked by this group of aliens. I don't think we ever get find out what the, the aliens are called. They did t they did say the, the planet they came from at one point, but I can't remember what that was. But basically, they are brainwashing soldiers, abducting them from Earth, and then forcing them to fight in sort of uh, environments that relate to the time zones that they've come from. So, for instance, we've got the World War Zone, we've got uh, a Roman zone, yes. we've got a Mexican Revolution zone, various revolutions. Uh, well, and, but they're all going on, they, they, and they're separated by this sort of like gas, this gas stuff. Yes. Um, to stop them from going between between the zones, and the the intention is that the these aliens aim to produce this sort of super army from the from the various survivors of these wars, um, to you know so they've basically got the best of the best, which they can then use to to take over the world, and they've been aided in this respect by a member of the Doctor's own race, which as, yes. as we know now the Time Lords, who calls himself the the War Chief. And the whole sort of aim of the story really is the Doctor, once, as soon as they find out, and as, as you said, Lou, the, the, sto the story sort of unravels over the ten episodes, yeah. doesn't it? It goes from her being a historical war one to when you suddenly realise when they get attacked by Romans that there's something a bit weird going on. Yeah. And then gradually you, you find yourself up onto the, uh, the, the, the sort of space base. And then it goes to the Time Lord's first appearance yeah, at the yeah. end. Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's right. So, um... And, and, and probably the, the, the most important part, I mean, the whole, the whole story is really good, actually. Yes, it's very but, good. We'll talk about that. But the, there's a few firsts that we get to this, don't we? Yes. We get to discover that the Doctor's race are called the Time Lords. Yes. Um, which, I, I guess, the, we toyed with that previously in terms of the concept of, the, of there being others, because we'd previously met the meddling monk and we'd seen yeah. it at a time. And Susan. Yes, indeed. Of course, yeah, we're getting Susan. But I think with the meddling monk, I, if I remember rightly, it doesn't go as far as to confirm that he's the same race, does it? No, but he has a TARDIS. But he has a TARDIS, so... Unless, I mean, he he is a Time Lord, right. but, you know, there could be a possibility, or from that Time Meddler story, um, I think he is confirmed as the Doctor's race, but it could be pos a possibility that he's just stolen the TARDIS when you've yeah. been to Gallifrey or something. Yeah, I just think but he, I think he, he is a to, Time Lord. It's struggled to work out, I think. Yeah, he? he is a Time Lord, I believe. Um, and that's, that's probably the crux of it, yeah, and what we eventually get. We, get. we get this final part of the story, which is quite separate from the other nine episodes. It is, yeah. and that it's very much about a trial for the Doctor, introducing you to the race of the Time Lords and their vengeance, and leading to the regeneration yeah. of... The second Doctor and saying into, goodbye to Jamie and Zoe. Yeah, and, for, and particularly you look at Jamie. Jamie ran for. Was it, did he come in in the second episode? Yeah. So so he'd ran pretty much the whole of the second Doctor's era. I know. So what did I think then? Should I stop? Yeah, with you that? stop. Yeah. Um, I thought this is the best nineteen sixties episode of Doctor Who. Mm -hmm. I think it's epic. It's um, very thrilling. It moves at a really good pace. Mm -hmm. um, it's got quite a bit of action, as well yep. as some quite good talks. Um, it's got a great regeneration for the second Doctor. Great introduction to the Time Lords. Yep. Um, the idea is brilliant. And it's a good farewell to Jamie and Zoe as well. So there's quite a lot going on here. Some so cool you characters as well. But wait a hear you say, you've just declared this the best episode of the 1960s. I recall listening <laughs> only six weeks ago to an item on this show called the best item episode of the 60s and this didn't oh, win. We, that was a cheat when nobody would have won who Graphica after all. <laughs> I, think, um, I think what it, what it demonstrated isn't it, is that uh, watch, I think both of us watching War Games yeah. for a second time remembered quite how good it was. No, I so know. I think it was better the second time. It's only just better than Power of the Dark. Yeah. But it probably is slightly better. It is slightly better. Um, it's ten parts of greatness. Mm. 
Um, very, very good. And you might know, I like the epic stories. I like the ones which are more than six parts. Yeah. I, personally, I just think, I think Patrick Troughton is phenomenal in this He story. is brilliant. It's he, possibly it's, his best role. Yeah, I, I just think he's very, very funny. He's, he's, he's such a charming doctor. Yeah, he is. The second doctor. In, in, in so far as he's, he's probably in many respects, of all the doctors we've had, he's probably the most feeble. He is, yeah. You know, he's, he's, he gets het up far more easily by things. He gets stressed out by things. He's more likely to go, oh, no, no. No, ah, you're making me gutter. So, um, <laughs> That's a good impression. It was good, wasn't it? So I, I really, really like the second Doctor. Yes, me too. So. He is and one of the better Doctors. And he's really strong in this. I'm going to ask that question now, and then maybe we'll expand on things a little bit. But Lewis Moon. Yes. I've got to ask you. Too good, too bad. Woohoo! Right. So, anyone that hasn't seen this before, it sounds snazzy because it's too good, too bad, which is a, a great catchphrase. But actually, what that means in the great scheme of things is we both think of a good thing, so yes. we therefore get two good things about the story, and then we get two bad things about the story. Okay. So too good. I am going to say. One good is the is Patrick Troughton, and it, he's at his best in this story. Yeah. He's a brilliant doctor, as you can tell in this story. And it's a great farewell to his doctor. Okay, I, I think I'm going to go as my good. It's, it's just going to be the quality of the story. Yeah. Because it is a really great story. I love the way that, as as I said in the in the introduction, the fact that, that when you're watching it first of all. You just think it's a historical, and then it then it then introduces something above and beyond that, and then it introduces the time lord. So it just seems to be this gradual layering yes. of a story. So I think um, I, who, who wrote this one again? Um, Terence Dix and Malcolm Holt. Yeah, and it's a, a real pretty one. It's really really important, isn't it? Because it introduces us to the whole concept of Gallifrey and the, it, and the time. The lord. exile of Earth is yeah. also stood in as a as a concept. Yes, no, the, that's right. The whole of the John Pertwee era, basically, that's yeah. um, talked about and yeah. uh, affected in. Um, Too bad. It's harder to do bad. Yeah. I'm going to say Lady Jennifer's very underused. Yeah, I She's liked her. She's quite a good character, yeah. yet she is very underused as a character. Um, and as we said earlier, she's standing in a room with... Um, Dodo, um, mm -hmm. the Whispermen, and Leandro. I want to know why she's not in any more than those episodes because it, it seems it just seems that she's suddenly written out, isn't it? Um, you got to stay down yeah. here and look after people because you're a nurse. And and then um, the 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 guy, can you remember his name? The sergeant. Uh, Lieutenant Carstairs. Carstairs. He's also really good, by the way. Yes. But he's sort of like, I must go and find that woman. <laughs> and then he vanishes. Um, so, yeah, I'd, I'd agree that that I would like to know what happened to her. I, I, I'm just hoping she's okay. We don't know whether she's alright. For we, we know do a she might have got. Series. It could it could be a spin-off, couldn't it? Yeah. With Anne Travers. <laughs> Travers um, my and bad. Uh, HD Wells. I think my bad is going to be that it's only ten parts. Yeah. <laughs> I wish it was like the Daleks <laughs> Master Plan and it had an extra two parts I, or three I parts. Mean, in reality, I, th I think ten parts is is, is perfect for it. it I is. think if I've if I've got to go for a bad, um, quite a tough one actually to come up with a bad for this one. And I always yeah. get the harder role because you always go first. I know. I think I'm gonna go for. I mean, in reality, in, in, in a lot of the old ones, they're a little bit contrived in, in terms of when the Doctor's doing a cunning plan. You'd, you'd have to be pretty damn thick not to get the cunning plan because yeah. it, he'll be saying in a quite loud voice, Shush, Larry, this is a cunning plan! <laughs> or something like that, you know? So so I, th I think probably that, but I, that's just to think of something because there's, yeah, there's not there's much not wrong with much this episode. There's not much bad about this episode. In it's fact, not perfect, but it... It is very good. Very, but if, very if you good. look at our um, our rankings that we do each week for yes. on the randomizer, so we since we started the randomizer, this this is our ninety seventh ninety seventh story that we've watched, 
And both of us have placed this in second place. We have, yes. So, um, so, so that's, me, that's very, very good. That's to pretty see. good. And, 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 it's be, and it's ahead of Inferno, and that's, yes. that's no. Uh, but it can't beat Genesis of the Daleks, no. because I would say Genesis can't be beaten by anything now. We've got our definitive winner of the episodes, and I don't think anything is going to beat Genesis. Uh, you haven't seen the emoji monsters yet. Oh, yeah. The emoji monsters. So, um, Twitter poll? Yeah, so what do people think about it? When you put the question to Twitter, what do okay. people think of the war games? Um, I said that, um, what do I think of the war games? Um, 80% said it was fantastic, 20% said it was good, and 0% said it was alright or terrible. So everyone thinks it's fantastic. or good. It's got a pretty high rating there, isn't it? Definitely it's one to very, watch. Very high um, Certainly, I think, I think it is Patrick Troutman's best episode. But having said that, Patrick Troutman's run was a really good run. Yes. I think Doctor Who, William Hartnell may have been the first Doctor, but I, I think the stories just go up a level yes. with Troughton, I think. I've got here, I mean, this is a regeneration story, so I've got here the final results as well for which gender should be the next Doctor. Mm -hmm. The winner is the male Doctor with 56%. Uh, but do not too bad with 44% as the female Doctor. There we have it. So going back to our roundup of the war games then. Yes. Um, should we do the scores? Yes. Um, monsters, well there's not really any monsters, villains. Villains, I really like the concept, I really like the war chief. Yeah. Disappointed at what happens to him at the end because yeah. I'd like to have seen him come back. I'm going to go eight. Um, character development. Really good one for character yes. development because you learn all about the, the time lords. I'm going to say nine for character development. Um, okay, excitement. Love it. I found it a really exciting episode. Um, I'm going to say eight for that. Uh, pace. Really good pace. Even though it's ten episodes, it doesn't feel it doesn't feel like it drags at all. Actually, yes. I'm going to say a nine for pace. And story. I'm going to say nine for story. 43 out of 50, which yeah, is a, which weird. if it gets to 40, uh, if it gets over 40, it shows that it's an uh, exceptional story. I think it is, I, th I think it's one of the best, one of the best classic cues. One of the best of all time. One of the best of all time, yeah. Um, I think there are a few stories from New Who, maybe, and maybe a few stories from, Cla is there any stories from classic that can beat this apart from Genesis? Oh uh, yeah, there might be from Tom Baker. Some, something like Talons, potentially. But I don't know, actually. No. It's, it's, it's there or thereabouts, I think. Mm. Um, from New Who, Blink, maybe. Day of the Doctor. Uh, Day of the Doctor, maybe. Mm. That's probably it, I'd suggest. Yeah. So certainly, it's, it's one of the real one of the real classics. Definitely one to there. recommend. Yeah, I would watch this. Um, if you want to have a marathon episode, this is perfect. If yeah. you want to spread out your day, if you have nothing to do, if you if you have a day off, then then just watch the war oh, games. Have a war games day. Have a war games day, yeah, and you can fill up about four hours of your life <laughs> or something like. Shall that. we um, therefore move on to the magic random? I yes, we you. shall do the. Uh, now we've got a rule this week because uh, we have to fix the randomizer for number two hundred this week. Um, we've got to, yes, uh, we've got to pick a story which is, uh, more than, which is less than five parts. So if, if something comes up that's more than five parts, we will skip it and let it randomise again another day. Yes, if not, we, if it's a really good one though, we watch it on episode 201. Okay, so let's go for it, shall we? Let's press the magic randomise on. I bet it's like the invasion. Here it goes. We got, have we got to do that one? We might have to. We did say we were going to, didn't we? No. <sighs> okay. Right. Life is a hell. Okay, so Life we're going to we're hell. going to follow up one of the best Doctor Who stories <laughs> with of the all time. worst Doctor Who story of all time, in my opinion. Yeah. This it's, is this is dreadful. It's dreadful news. But uh, this is dreadful. I think we're I think we're going to have to go for it. What have we just been selected? Paradise Towers. Oh, oh no. I hope you share my loathing with this <laughs> one. I can think of about sixteen bads for this one and about one good. Um, well, but have you ever seen a Bonnie Langford episode? 
I've seen bits of them. And, oh, and, and make then, your life a living hell. I, I can't say we for this one, but no. uh, I'm, I'm keen for us to get some of these some of these dodgy ones out of the way. Yeah. Because otherwise, we can, well, come the end of the randomizer, we're going to have to sit through them all. Are we buying this on the BBC store? We're going to go to the BBC store and we're going to get we're going to order it. Not only, not only do we not really want to watch this one, but we're going to pay good money. Oh, we're going to pay good money. We've got to, to pay about one. five pounds yeah, for this just to get something we don't really want. Oh. But there we have it. Damn it. So, ladies and gentlemen, Paradise Towers, Idiot. that's what we'll be talking that's about. The, that's the thing to end this era of yeah. Doctor Who Time. But quite right. apt, really, because next week's special, um, I'll lead into this on the basis of it feeds in quite nicely yes. from, from uh, that item. Next week's special is the worst episodes of New Who. Oh, yeah. So, why not watch <laughs> We and should talk just about have the worst things in yeah. Doctor Who history special next week. So next week we'll be telling you the worst news of Doctor Who. <laughs> yeah. We'll probably have like we'll probably have some really bad news next week. I dread to say it. We'll have some really bad news, really bad review, really bad article. Yeah, so don't, um, I wouldn't even bother what I wouldn't bother listening if I was <laughs> I But if you do want to listen, because I'm sure it will still be entertaining and I'm sure it will still be good to hear our thoughts Paradise Towers. Um, you can listen on Friday because we're changing the day of the show yeah. for one week only. We do these sometimes because um, Decal's not going to be available on the Saturday. Is it a work thing or a gig thing? No, it's just an away thing. Oh, yeah. So, um, yeah. so that will be on the 16th? Probably. Yeah. Um, Friday, definitely. Oh, no, no, that's the 7th. Is yeah, the 17th. Yeah. We'll be back here on the 17th of February for a new show. You only have to wait six days to hear the Nightmare Show. It'll be episode 199, so it's the end of this era of uh, of, uh, of Doctor Who, Time and Space, uh, yeah. because we're because... going to end this era on an all-time low, because number 200, we're going to have sort of a slightly new arrangement for the theme tune. We're going to have the return of a few things for episode 200. We're just going to have some new artwork released to advertise it. You know, it's going to be a brand new era of the show. And, you know, here's to the... Uh, we'll, we'll end the, the this century of shows. I was, um, I was just thinking by that, you mean that come the end of Paradise Towers, we'll be jumping out of the window and it's the end of the show. Yeah. We're good, because we can't face it. No, don't make us do it. Will you hate this episode as much as will me? Will I hate it as much as you? Time will tell. Let's watch an episode tonight. <laughs> um, no. Um, so next week we have our nightmare series of Doctor Who. On Excellent. episode 199. How can... Oh, oh, we'll come on to that in a minute. Um, we, we'll be watching Paradise Towers. Uh, we will be looking at the latest news and views. We'll be, we won't be pressing we, the we magic randomizer. We'll be revealing what we'll be doing on episode yeah. 200. So... Episode 200 will be an unmissable show. I usually advertise it on Twitter as an unmissable show. Next week's, I will advertise it as a missable show. A missable one. <laughs> but I hope you, I hope you actually stay tuned for I hope you tune in episode. for it because it will be quite fun. We'll probably be laughing a lot. We probably will. So how can people get hold of us to tell us how much they hate Paradise Towers? Or maybe even like it. Maybe people yeah, do like it. Maybe do you people like, do it, do like it, If you do, let us know. Does anyone really like Paradise Towers? Let us know. It's your opinion. Um, I mean, you could let us know on um, Twitter at drhu time un, as in end space, where you could let us know all about your dream series, nightmare series, or some of the episodes inside of them. Um, what do you think of the war games? What do you think of the war games? What do you think of Paradise Towers? Um, and and what do you think of the show in general? You can probably access our newsletter and previous shows and all sorts of things at the moment. Also, make sure you tune into past shows of the podcast if you really want to listen to them because they're being advertised at the moment because they're sort of being wiped out at the moment on Podomatic, so it's your last chance to listen to them on Podomatic. For episode 181, uh, will be wiped up next Friday, but... Um, Can I just explain that? Yes. Please? The reason being, just very, very briefly, is that we've only got so much storage on Podomatic, so they'll all be there on YouTube, but we basically have used all our storage, so we're 
as we add a new episode, we delete the previous one. But we're moving into a new era of the show after next week. So join us next week on the final show. Uh, you can look at our YouTube videos at Miss Lewis Moon. Uh, Tweety call that. Mark with a C. Mark Freak Geek. About any geeky stuff, including Doctor Who, but, you know, all sorts of things like Game of Thrones, Walking Dead, Spaghetti Westerns. Netflix superhero series all yeah, sorts of all things sorts of like that um, also um, you can get us at Podomatic, Doctor Who Time and Space and on iTunes as well as we're on the Doctor Who Podcast Alliance good, thank you very much, I'm Doctor Cool and I'm Lewis Moon, we'll see you all next time at the Last Chance Saloon we will see you next time same time. Same space. Goodbye. <laughs>